Ladies and gentlemen, what a treat we have in store here on the Sports Report. The number one global sports show and our guest to kick things off here is somebody I've wanted to have on here a while. And his story is definitely one that a worldwide audience on Sportinarium is definitely going to find interesting. And he's the hound of Ulster. He's a pro wrestler trained at a fighting spirit pro wrestling, which of course has been led by the likes of James Drake, who's doing a phenomenal job with NXT UK, did a phenomenal job last year with Blank Canvas Wrestling and with his tag team partner, Matt Davis. And he's on his way to bigger and better things. He's one one of the more exciting pro wrestlers around. And without further ado here on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show, The Hound of Ulster, Declan Barkov. How's it going? My friend, how are you? How's it going, Tommy? Thanks for having me on. Absolutely, my friend. It's an honor to have you on here. And obviously, thank you for the opportunity to talk about all the great things that you are going to do inside and outside the ring. And for our worldwide audience here in Sportinarium, it's now been just over a year since your last match with your tag team partner, Matt Davis. And what were your memories of your last match on February the 5th, 2020? As I say, it's it's been over a year and we've had three lockdowns since then. So there's been sort of nothing happening. And just that's the last match that's been sort of playing in my head over and over and you sort of it's one of those ones I'm not particularly happy with if, if you get me there's things I, I feel I'm a better wrestler now than I was then but it's a bit galling the last one I had was a loss but it is what it is, but I'm just looking forward to getting stuck back into this next one, whenever that may be. Absolutely, and we definitely know, my friend, that is going to be sooner rather than later, where you and Matt Davis, your tag team partner, had teamed up with against the Mercy Side Mercenary Squad. And it was a great match, and everybody should check that out on the Blank Canvas Wrestling YouTube page, where they can find out what kind of match that was. But see, I didn't think of it in that match in a lot of ways that you didn't lose. And the reason I think that you didn't lose, because you'd come a long way from the time you'd started in the ring to that match on February the 5th, 2020, because I look at the wrestler that you became and the versatility that you were able to show in the ring. And I think in a lot of ways, actually, you won in that match because you told the story, you were able to show a lot of ring psychology in that match, and you showed yourself to be somebody that we're going to look a lot to for the future here in 2021 and beyond. And tell me what your thoughts are on that. Well, <laughs> thanks for saying that. It's, it's, it's honestly nice to hear that. Thank you very much. Well, honestly, you look at the card that that show had. You look at some of the names that were on that show. I mean, you had Chris Ridgway, you had Ethan Allen, you know, you had Mike Hill wrestling there. You had, um, you had some really like top quality guys. You had Sam Bailey, CJ Banks against uh, me at the last. And the fact that me and Matt were able to go out there and like at least hold our own with some guys who are incredibly experienced and incredibly talented. I sort of say that I'm stewing over it a little bit, but if I sort of take a step back, it was good to be even on the same show as those guys and to be able to sort of hold my own. What did you learn from that match in at least wrestling against the Mercy Side Mercenary Squad? What did you learn from being in the ring with them in that match? Well, Scott Oberman is incredibly talented. Honestly, he's a joy to be in the ring with, uh, except when he's battering it, but he's just, he's <laughs> so good. He's so smooth. Like, Dan's fantastic as well. Like, a real, like, powerhouse. He's, he got himself in phenomenal shape as well. Like, he really put the work in. But that was me and Matt's, I think that was maybe our third match as a team. And the first time, Matt was actually the tag team partner of my very first match. We were wrestling down in the camp shows in, in Wales, in the north of Wales. <laughs> and the very first thing that happened, I remember I remember starting the match, got up a little bit, tagged Matt in. And I think this very the second thing that happened to Matt was he could German suplex on his head. <laughs> so we at least made some improvements there. But we were a fairly inexperienced team then, and I'm looking forward to getting stuck back in with him again. <laughs> We know, Declan, that you will definitely get back in the ring with him. And do you prefer singles or tag team wrestling? As a fan, I've always been a fan of tag wrestling. You do also have, you have someone to watch. There's more stuff you can do. You can tell a different sort of story in the ring. There is more to keep track of, definitely. But it's one of those where I I always, there's that extra pressure, I feel, if you're a, if you're a tag wrestler. If you're a singles wrestler, it's only you and your opponent you're crossing it. You've got to worry about it. You know, you got to worry about what you're doing, not what any, and what they're doing, nothing else. But when you've got a tag team, you've also got to make sure you're able to keep up with your partner. You've got to make sure you're able to work together in that way. And you sort of, that's another person you don't want to let down, if that makes sense. And it's just another sort of layer of pressure that's, you know, it can be good, but, and it's definitely worth it 
when it pays off, but it's just an extra little thing to think about. Are you in contact still with your tag team partner, Matt Davis? Do you guys still keep in touch throughout all this? Yeah, yeah, we have a couple of little WhatsApp group chats and things like that. Uh, we're sort of sending each other ideas and uh, little things for booze for, uh, you know, presentation about how we're sort of going to conduct ourselves when we get back. In fact, we're thinking we're looking to add a third third person. Um, it's a mate of mine, Gary McGuinness, who is very talented, even if he is a bit of an annoying git. But <laughs> I think if we have the three of us, it just gives us that many more options. There's been some very good trios over the years and hopefully we'd be one of them. Well, I think instantly right away, the trio that everybody has talked about over the past few years is the New Day. And I think of another one that was in the past was Demolition. So I think, listen, Demolition and New Day move on over because Matt Davis, Gary McGinnis, and Declan Sands are definitely (laughs) going to become the new trio that everybody in professional wrestling is going to watch and pay attention closely to. And I was also curious for our worldwide audience here on Sportinarium listening, and what got you into wrestling? It was probably the same as a lot of other people around my age that you ask. When I was a kid, we'd have uh, we'd have Sky, which was like um, like satellite TV. So up until nine o'clock at nine p.m., you would have Cartoon Network on, and you'd have shows like Dexter's Lab, Johnny Bravo, Powerpuff Girls, things like that. And at nine o'clock, what happened is the runover would change onto TNT, uh, Turner Network Television. And sometimes you get the classic movies coming on, but on Monday nights, it would switch over to Nitro. WCW Nitro and that is the first time I remember seeing professional wrestling I'm a little bit too young for the world of sports stuff like for when it happened but Nitro was my first experience and the first thing that hooked me was I remember seeing Goldberg and I didn't know who any of these people were at the time Goldberg spearing the West Texas Rednecks and absolutely destroying them I just looked at this (laughs) massive dude with a goatee just ruining people and I thought well, this is incredible I just got to keep watching this that was it it was like right I got to find out if this is on regularly I got to watch it all the time got to watch it I could find Thunder as well but uh, yeah that was I think my first experience was Goldberg and the West Texas Rednecks <laughs> that sounds a lot like 1999 to me. That sounds a lot like Bobby Duncan Jr. That sounds a lot like Barry Windham. That sounds like around summer of 99 or so, maybe give or take, maybe late spring, early summer of 1999. And you think about WCW and what it did for professional wrestling and giving people like yourself that worldwide audience here. I think that's what wrestling can do. It, it can unite people and it can definitely really make somebody all of a sudden change their life course and find something else and also then growing up for you who were some of the wrestlers that you looked up to or followed closely aside from Goldberg I mean Goldberg was obviously the first one but you look at guys like when I started it was the bigger guys guys like Sid Vicious sort of like stood through the screen Kevin Nash and then you look at guys like DDP who was just like oozing charisma but as I watched more you know you'd still get the tag teams like you get the Harlem Heat you get the Steiners but the more you watch, the more you see guys like like the Revolution, which was uh, Shane Douglas, uh, Perry Satter, and Dean Malenko and Chris Benoit. But they had feuding with the Filthy Animals, which was like a Conan Mysterio, Billy Kidman, and I think Disco Inferno was there at one point. But you start going from these big, larger than life guys, like these huge, huge muscle people you'd never seen before, like Schwarzenegger, they're basically looking like. And, you know, they were fantastic. But then as you're watching the card more, you'd see guys getting into the real nitty gritty of like wrestling you'd watch the guys like lucha like who would do all this crazy stuff you'd watch mysterio you'd watch hoovy even watch la parka dancing around in a skeleton suit hitting people with <laughs> i mean that's that's it people sort of as much as i love good solid technical wrestling and i really do you can't discount the appeal of seeing a man in a skeleton suit hitting people with chairs I mean, you've got to have something for everybody and wcw will get at that Declan, my memories of La Parca go back to um, Bret Hart. I did an interview once with uh, Mean Gene Oakland. For whatever reason, he was listing all of the things he was mad about in WCW. And he mentioned La Parca in an interview. It was all of a sudden La Parca became, at the time, the internet was starting to become what it is today. But he all of a sudden became like an internet sensation. And everybody talked about La Parca for months after months. And you're giving me memories because we're about the same age, I want to say. And that brings back my memories of my childhood childhood going into high school all i would do was wait for 
Nitro and right for Raw, but I was always more of a WCW guy for whatever reason. My brothers were more WWE fans and Monday Night Raw because Monday Night Raw, for whatever reason, had the Attitude Era, it had Stone Cold, it had The Rock, it had Degeneration X, but I always liked WCW because it had the variety, it had quote unquote where the big boys play, it had the big guys like Kevin Nash yeah. and like Goldberg, and then it also had guys like Sting, it had guys like DDP, but it also had guys like you mentioned, Rey Mysterio, Billy Kidman, Uventud Guerrero, The Juice, Uvi, also later on AJ Styles at the very end of WCW, also had people like Conan, who you mentioned, who were kind of street savvy and cool, and Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn, Raven was in there for a little while, and Chris Benoit, We I guess we can still mention his name, but Chris Benoit was a big part of WCW, so that's why I always liked WCW, was because of the mix and the variety of it. And then I was curious also for a worldwide audience here on Sportinarium, and what led you to become a professional wrestler? Uh, obviously, watching it as a kid, it's you, know, you want to do it. Now, what that resulted in at the time was essentially just doing backyard stuff and just uh, messing about in school. Like, I think a guy got his arm broken at one point for these things. <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's these things happen. You're, you're young and you're an idiot. But so I went, I went to, um, I sort of forgot about it. I went off. I don't know. I remember it got taken off and I don't know why. It just, I, you know, waited um, for the cartoons to run over until, until wrestling and there was nothing there. I didn't know at the time was CW closed down. It sort of, I wasn't really, you know, behind the scenes and anything like that at that point. So it wasn't until years later that I always still always was a fan, but I went to uh, went to uni and then I picked it up in like Sky Sports again and started becoming a fan again. But when I found out that uh, Fighting Spirit had opened, and they opened in 2017, but it was only for a little bit after that I was able to drive and work sort of lined up with training. And it was that thing where I thought, you know what, I'm 30 now. If I don't uh, at least get in the ring, run the ropes a little bit, do something, sort of see uh, see how things go. And so I called up my mates who I'd known from, from secondary school, from high school, you'd call it, and said, listen, I'm going to go down. This is Gary. I'm going to go down and check this place out. He goes, okay, cool. Just let me know how you get on. Popped on, met James Drake, and met Zach Gibson. And it was like, oh, yeah, yeah. So it got me in, got me running the ropes, uh, got me taking a few back bumps, you know, learned a lock up and this and that. I thought, you know, it's fantastic. I'll, uh, you know, I'm not happy just running ropes. I'll go again. You know, we'll see how we get on. I'll uh, maybe just get a training match. I'll see how I get on there. And I just sort of steamrolled from there and just kept going and going and going. But uh, it was such a, such a top quality school. Like, it, there's so many good names that come out of there. And I think if I had a went to a different school, I don't think I would have stuck with it the same way I have. You said something interesting that I want to go back to because you said that you were 30 when you first trained to become a pro wrestler and go with Fighting Spirit Pro Wrestling. And usually to become at 30 and train to be a pro wrestler, unless you're a professional athlete who had some type of resume like a Goldberg, like a Titus O'Neil, like a Baron Corbin, etc. It usually is very hard to be able to pull something off like that. Did you feel any pressure or did you feel as if maybe you should have did this five years earlier or seven years earlier? And I know that you were finally able to drive and get to Fighting Spirit Pro Wrestling, but I was curious because you mentioned the fact that you were 30 when you trained. Again, most people who train to become a pro wrestler between anywhere between the ages of, let's say, 18 and maybe 22 or 23. And I remember as a kid even doing sort of backyard wrestling. Longer hair, yeah. Yeah. What was that like then to be 30 in training? I mean, you ever reflect on on that did you ever feel like you had any regrets i mean talk to us about that no it was it was one of those things where i've sort of just been taking things off that i wanted to do like i've run a marathon a couple of years ago i never thought i'd ever do that but i didn't initially go in going right i'm gonna make a career of this it was you know what there's a great opportunity to just have a play about in the ring you know just do something that you know people would do in a stag night out essentially but i get in there and honestly everyone there was like so welcoming like um, i want to give a shout out to ethan kelly who was just i think he was maybe 17 at the time he was just great he was just a lovely lad just really welcoming and just made me feel like he didn't make me feel like an idiot for trying at 30 and seeing the trainers there but that was i just i did a couple of bumps you know ran the ropes so there's no pressure of oh i'm too old to start this it was just uh, having a bit of crack and and then I went back the next week. It was like, oh, this is still great. Still enjoying this. And it was learning the skill. I look at it like starting the martial art or learning guitar or something like that. That You're not... 30 isn't that old in the grand scheme of things, even though my knees sometimes tell me that, yes, it absolutely is. <laughs> but, no, at, at the time, no real pressure on myself. Uh, to say I maybe feel that now sometimes, 
yes and no. You look at some of the, the young guys coming through who are like 19, 18, 20, and how talented they are. Some A bit of me is like, damn it, I should start at this when I was, you know, 10 years younger. But man, it is what it is. I know my limitations. I'm a bit of a bit more world experience, if that makes sense. And yeah, I'm not going to start doing some, you know, mad over the top rope flippy stuff because <laughs> I know my knees will just turn to dust. <laughs> <laughs> I always but say to myself, I, how does Jeff Hardy know pull it off? Yeah, you, know, you said something interesting because I'm like, Jeff Hardy is like in his 40s. I'm like, how is he still doing what he's doing? I mean, Rey Mysterio even has got to be in his mid 40s. And I say to myself, Declan, how do these guys pull that off? I mean, I'm saying to myself, we're about the same age. I'm like, I don't think I could do that either. And I'm in good shape. I've always been a walker. I've always been a runner and I've always been athletic, but I don't think I could jump off the top rope and dive into everybody outside the ring like those guys do it. So that's why I'm almost curious in a sense on what's that like in taking that punishment because a lot of people think ah wrestling it's not a sport it's fake but I'm like no listen watch these guys every night watch what these guys and gals do in the ring for 10 to 15 minutes I guarantee you that after the first two or three minutes you're going to be winded and you're going to feel like you're going to be out of breath you're going to be gassed and you're not going to be able to have that kind of match where all of a sudden you lose your senses and it's almost as if you're going to really be spitting dust and you're going to be really heading for the exit it's really quick and you're not going to be a wrestler for very long. So I got to ask you that, how is the adjustment to getting your body calibrated to be ready for that type of punishment? It was tricky because I'd not really done much in the way of physical. I mean, I, I say physical sports. I played a lot of football or soccer. And honestly, I've, even though I've picked up injuries from wrestling, like I, I had a partial tear on my MCL about two years ago, but I've honestly just, football has actually been much worse. Soccer has been so much worse. Like, because my all my ligaments and my ankles have gone, like my ankle still doesn't sit properly because of the way I, uh, I've damaged all the tendons in there. But the first bump, yeah, going back to your question, the first bump was tough. Running the ropes was tough. I actually am looking back at when I started, I was trying to find the exact date for this interview and I found a picture of my back just completely cut up from running the ropes. And that's just, it's, it seems like learning guitar. <laughs> you, uh, your fingers just are going to bleed at the start, but they callous up. And that's it. Your body just calluses up. Honestly, I'm sort of dreading the first bump back again because all the calluses have gone and I actually feel all right. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, this is why we feel all right when it comes to talking about the hell. Double and that's pro wrestling star Declan McCarthy, as I am the host of the Sports Report, the Reverend Tom Bryson. For more information on the Sports Report, you can go to sportsreportx.com and listen to all of our archives. You can go to soundcloud.com slash the Sports Report 2019. You can also check us out on YouTube at the Sports Report, the number one global sports show. And as always, a huge shout out to the entire team here in Sport Area, including Lakey, Arv, Danny, Dale, Sean, Dave, Steve, Susie, Sasha, everybody. At Sportinarium that has made us the number one global sports show. And for more information on Sportinarium, you can follow Sportinarium at Twitter, Instagram at Sportinarium, like Sportinarium on Facebook at Sportinarium, and subscribe most importantly to the Sportinarium YouTube page where Sportinarium has over 47,600 subscribers now. We are on our way to 50,000 subscribers, and you can also catch some of our interviews there on Sportinarium. So, I want to acknowledge the entire team on Sportinarium, and also you can catch the sports report on Sportinarium.com. That's Sportinarium.com. Fridays, 5 to 7 Eastern Time, 10 to 12 UK Time. Saturdays, 5 to 7 Eastern Time, 10 to 12 UK Time. And Sundays, the news report comes back from 5 to 7 Eastern Time, 10 to 12 UK Time. And you can do that all at Sportinarium.com, the number one global radio station. And we are talking with one of our favorite wrestlers, the Hound of Ulster, and Declan McCarthy, who's on his way to bigger and better things. He is one of the best in the ring. You definitely need to check his last match out, February the 5th. 2020 for Blank Canvas Wrestling and he did a great job in that match. He is somebody you're going to keep an eye on for years and years to come. That is why we are honored to speak with him here on the Sports Report to share his story and his journey. Declan, I know there's somebody you know that we got to mention here and We've had him on now a couple of times. He was on last week's show and the previous show. He was also on Sportinarium with Lakey and R for their show, which is a phenomenal show, one of the top shows around the Spartans of boxing show. So everybody needs to check out the Spartan show and find out why they are the top go-to guys when it comes to all the latest happenings in the world of professional boxing. But we're talking, of course, our friend R.P. Davis, the legendary R.P. Davis, also former boxing champion turned pro wrestling star with Grand Pro Wrestling and Odyssey Pro Wrestling. And I was wondering if... 
what your memories were of RP and what's he been like as somebody in talking with who also got into the business a little later than most would. Yeah, oh, RP is, he, honestly, he's a great lad. He's come down to Fighting Spirit a couple of times. I think the first time I met him was him, he and um, Sam Gradmill came down because it was when Tyson Fury was doing his uh, bit with Braun Strowman. BBC was actually down um, to do a little news report involving Ryan. And uh, so he came down and he trained. And for a guy who is so athletically gifted and has accomplished so much like in boxing, he is one of the most down-to-earth people I've ever met. He's so nice he's so willing to take feedback and criticism you can see it he's just he wants to learn and he wants to put a shift in and he he's, he's honestly like <laughs> I can't say enough good things about him. He's, just, he's a great lad. Like he's currently in the process of the same uh, workout program I'm on, and is yeah, he's, he's making incredible progress. I am actually really excited to see him in Odyssey Wrestling because I think he's going to do great things. He's the nicest man I know who terrifies me. <laughs> That's pretty accurate because he could definitely pack a punch, and he does pretty good in the ring as well. That's why we always say RPD, RPD, RPD. So we definitely have a chance for him. We're going to definitely come up with a chance for you, my friend, in the coming weeks and months here on the show. So we're going to definitely make sure that we <laughs> come up with something for you pretty good. But I like the Hound of Ulster. I like the Hound of Ulster. That is a pretty good name. That is definitely one of the more sharper names, I think, in the business. And another guy that we're going to speak with in a little while that I'm really excited to talk with because I've gotten to watch some of his work and he's really somebody to keep an eye on, especially for our listeners here in the States and haven't got a chance to see the many great talent that are out there in the UK. And that's Rick Marcus. And Rick Marcus is somebody obviously who's involved with Odyssey Pro Wrestling and he's the Coombarian outlaw. And he's really somebody that he could go in the ring with Braun Strowman. He could go in the ring with Bobby Lashley. He could go in there in the ring with a number of different guys. Big E is another name that comes to mind. So he's toe-to-toe with those guys. He's a big man. I would not want to get him angry. But give us any impressions or any thoughts for Rick Marcus as we're about to speak with him in a little while on Sportinarium. Well, so Rick is, uh, as you say, he's a big man. He's a big, scary dude. <laughs> but again, he's another guy who's been training like he's been uh, on the same sort of training program with. And I've met Rick a couple of times. And again, lovely, lovely speak to Would not want to get on his bad side. He's, you know, he's only really <laughs> got bigger and stronger. <laughs> he's terrifying to do it beforehand anyway. But uh, he's another guy is uh, I'd, I'd love, to, love to get stuck into the ring with at some point as well. He's a very, very scary man. Very big. So it'll be a bit of a different challenge to sort of work around him. But yeah, it's, uh, I know, I, I wish him all the best. Like. Very excited to see what he does with Odyssey Pro Wrestling and really excited to talk with him on all the great things that he has done in the ring. Really Really looking forward to this and I want to give him a huge shout out and cannot wait to speak with him here in a little while and I was also curious Declan for you in terms of since we've been kind of going with it what does it mean to be the Hound of Ulster I mean talk to us on how did you come up with the idea of the name the Hound of Ulster and what does it mean to you to be the Hound of Ulster it'd be a little bit of a history lesson here but the Hound of Ulster was the nickname given to like a legendary Ulster folk hero called Ku Holland and he was essentially he was like an anti hero as, as such but he was a great warrior but again there's a whole lot of stuff where he was tricked and the fighting his brothers he's a big part of the battle of Cooley and the team there is a huge amount of history behind there but this is sort of stuff you don't really I feel it's being lost a little bit there is so much depth and and wonder in Irish mythology that sort of gets brushed over a little bit and these characters these heroes and these legends I feel it's worth sort of looking at them for inspiration and that guy who just I don't want to swear here but he took no guff shall we say and he was basically the most feared man in all of Ulster in all of Ireland just an incredible warrior being from Ulster and being from County Down it's like an, I can relate to that a little bit whereas the guy who just comes in and he he is the best he, that's what he is he was the best at the time until he as all great heroes do get brought low you know no happy ending for him but that's, that's one of the things I don't think everyone gets to have a happy ending <laughs> Well, on this show, my friend, the Hound of Ulster gets a happy ending. And we know that Declan McCarthy is going to do <laughs> great things. And obviously, we are very excited to see what the future brings with you, my friend. So we're very excited on this show. There will always be a happy ending. You are definitely going to be our world champion. You are definitely going to win many, <laughs> many titles. And 
February 5th, 2020 was not the outcome you hoped for, but we know that the next match and all the rest of the matches afterwards are all going to result in Ws because on this show, you are definitely our winner. And on this show, you won February 5th, 2020. So congratulations <laughs> on this match. As far as we know, we edited the tape. We found a way to do an alternate ending and you actually won that match. So <laughs> even that, we're giving the victory on this show. So we are giving you that victory over Mercenary Squad. So we are definitely giving you a victory in that match. So listen, I know you weren't happy with it when we asked you originally well congratulations because we are awarding you guys as winners but i was curious as we have a few more minutes with you how do you keep yourself focused and ready during the pandemic because it's been over a year now since you're in the ring and obviously we're hoping sooner rather than later you'll be back in the ring so how have you kept kept yourself mentally and physically ready for when that next match happens well, it has been tough. I mean, as I said earlier, it was, there's been three lockdowns. And I think for a lot of people, this one has been really tough. I don't know if it's just a combination of the, it's a third one. So it feels like it's wearing on you more of the weather has been so much worse. Like at least we had like a nice summer for the first two. But you know, I've been working, which honestly, I'm pretty grateful for. There's a lot of people who are out of work or have been furloughed. And I know what it's like all too well to be out of work for a while. It really does play havoc with your head. But I've been chatting to some friends, chatting to, to Matt, to Gary, and still working on new things. Eddie, uh, James Drake, he's been doing like Zoom calls, which has been really useful for the Fight Spirit guy to sort of help pick over matches. Even though if there hasn't been training, there's still been uh, at least something to be working towards and trying to improve yourself. You were open for bits and pieces during the pandemic, like where you still get able to train, but it's so stop start that it was difficult to get going. So you'd come in with all these new ideas and all these new things that you wanted to do and try and you get like maybe three, four weeks and then, you know, it's all gone again. So like I said earlier, you try not to plan too much because, you know, I had a wedding that just isn't, well, not happening, but it will be happening at some undetermined point in the future. But I don't blame anyone for really struggling at the minute because it has been tough. But my thing is I'm, I'm training, I'm doing the 36 week fatigue with Guy, with Rick, with Rick Marcus, with uh, with RP Davis, and they've been a really good support structure. There's something to work towards. There's at least a definite end point with that. And there's been some, I've been seeing some good progress with my own physique, with my own um, mental mindset. That's really helped. Like even when it's, there's been tough days, the guys in that group are, are really supportive. I mean, it's good to sort of be able to bounce your feelings off them and like be able to go, right, yes, people are making progress. Don't get down it. People are all sort of struggling, but you can lift each other up. And that's been, that's been very good rather than trying to look for definite endpoints. I mean, there's companies putting on shows that are canceling shows, they're putting on shows and canceling shows. So that has been really affecting people. So I've been trying not to get involved. In that. I'm just trying to work on my, trying to get my fitness up, trying to get my fatigue up, trying to watch as much stuff as I can, to try and get as um, sharp as I can be when I get back. But that's it. Like, whenever that may be, I, I want to be as ready for it as I possibly can. Let your hearts not be troubled. A rising tide lifts all boats, and Declan McCarthy and everybody else in pro wrestling will be that rising tide that is going to lift us. And we will eventually be out of lockdown in the UK and elsewhere. So a rising tide lifts all boats. And we know that Declan will definitely help us get through this. And we will all get through this together. And that's why we know that Declan McCarthy is going to be that rising tide that is going to lift us. And Declan, then what's it going to be like when you get back in that ring for whenever that's going to be, wherever that's going to be? What's that feeling going to be like when you return to the ring? Uh, honestly, I feel kind of sorry for the guy opposite me. <laughs> Possibly, man, at that point. And I know there's a few guys you're training with have like uh, aren't particularly fond of some forearms I'll be throwing, but yeah, it's if the first one back, I, I'm I'm really looking forward to it. I don't honestly at that point don't care if I win, lose, draw, whatever. As long as I can get back in and get back to wrestling, I'll be happy enough. But you know, definitely looking for that win. Well, as we said a few minutes ago, you were going to win every match in the February 5th, 2020. The outcome has been reversed. So you may have lost that match, but on this show, we have awarded you and Matt the winners. So like I said before, every Every match going forward, you're going to win. So you, we're going to have the next Goldberg winnings. We talked about Goldberg and how you watched Goldberg in 99. We're going to give you 179 win streak, whatever it is, 175 match winning streak, whatever it is going to be. We're going to give you a streak just like Goldberg. So in this show, my friend, you are never a loser. You're always going to be undefeated. I was also then curious before we get to closing thoughts and ask you one other question. Is there any wrestlers right now that you look up to or any favorite wrestlers that you have currently that maybe you emulate your style off? It's always going to be a bit of a cop-out to say your trainers, but Zach Gibson, James Drake, they definitely have a massive 
influence in my style for obvious reasons. People I'm watching now, Daniel Bryan is fantastic. Like he's, he's been great for so, so long. Like he's, he's got to be in contention for the greatest of all time there. Uh, I think Roman Reigns is on the run of his life. But for people that I'm watching and trying to emulate my style or where I'm trying to pick things up from, honestly, it's, it's some of the older stuff and going back to what made me want to watch wrestling at the time. Like Fit Finley is a guy I'm really starting to pick apart. His not only his WCW stuff, but his uh, his run when he came back in I think two thousand six seven his uh, SmackDown run, which was fantastic. Like I mean, I think his first match was against Matt Hardy, and he was like throwing out stuff I'd never seen before. Even then, at that stage when he was in his fifties, so going back and watching his stuff when he's even younger and there was a bit more athletic, and watching the guy he was wrestling at that point as well. It's I was always told don't copy your influences. Copy your influences, influences. Because that way you don't, you get more, you'll sound more like them, if that makes sense. And I sort of like to draw from guys like Malenko. I think everyone, there's everyone of a certain generation does. Malenko, Eddie, you know, those sorts of guys who are so technically sound, but also very entertaining at the same time. But I was watching, I was watching a Philly match the other day. And the way he took somebody into a wrist lock, it just looked like the most horrible thing he could do to somebody in the world. He looks like he's just bullying this pearl ad into just a wrist lock. And those are my interesting things. Like, again, not to say I don't love, like, you know, a massive dive over the top or watch a 630 splash. They're fantastic. I can't do them. So <laughs> I love to pick up things from guys who are just a bit more intricate technically, but use pro wrestling as a combat sport, if that makes sense. I think matches like Chris Benoit, Booker T, best out of seven. I think all those matches that Bret Hart and Chris Benoit had going back to WCW, I think about matches between DDP and the Macho Man, Randy Savage. I mean, there is a long list of matches that you can go back. And even for today, two matches that I really enjoyed was NXT, Pete Dunne versus Finn Balor, Tommy Dreamer versus Rich Swan. Of course, Rich Swan was in 205 live for the WWE. And those are two matches that come to mind for me and Tommy Dreamer and Rich Swan for the Impact title and Pete Dunne and Finn Balor. But there's a a lot of great wrestling out there and we got a feeling everybody statewide in the uk ireland and elsewhere is going to be watching declan mccarthy for many 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 years to come he is a great wrestler you definitely <laughs> want to check him out because we know he is on his way to doing things that very few wrestlers will be able to do it before i get your closing thoughts and obviously it's a tremendous honor to have spoken with you i also want you to plug all of your social media and get your closing thoughts here but for your career so far i wanted to ask you for a worldwide audience listening on Sporting Area. Is there one or two moments that stand out most in your career so far, Declan? Yeah, I'll go with two. I think one good, which was, I think, my eventual debut at Fighting Spirit, which was in like a tech and tag match with, I was teaming with Matt Davies and Damon Lee, who's just an incredible, incredible veteran. And we were wrestling Ethan Kelly, Jay Wright and Joe Bolton and wrestled Jay Wright for my team and picked up the win. Was really happy with it. Went well. Part of that, because of my win, we actually helped win the whole series. So that was really good. It was just really nice to actually make my debut in front of the school, in the school of training. And I think another one that I have was we were running the camp. Well, not quite the camps. We were running the festival shows and it was wrestling my friend Gary McGinnis. And this was his first match. And so we had, uh, you know, a good sort of clean match we we're going to have. And I think one of the first things that happened was Gary goes to escape my wrist lock by backflipping uh, the way X-Pac used to off of using the top rope. But the problem is the ropes were much, much looser than we were used to. So he goes to backflip, the rope sags, and he lands straight on his head. This is like 20 seconds into the match. <laughs> so I was like, oh God, this is a guy, this is his first match, this is maybe my third. So like, all right, well, you know, this has gone to hell. But, you know, we picked it back up. I think we had a really good match at the end of it. Um, I won, obviously. Yeah. So just as long as Gary's listening to that, he knows that I beat him <laughs> one, two, three, three in the middle of the ring. <laughs> But that was good. My debut for Fighting Spirit and the very my first match, my best mate's first match was against me. And even though some stuff did not go exactly how we wanted, it was still a really good good experience. That was the guy that I've been uh, watching wrestling with for, for years. So that was, uh, that was really, really cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a feeling that there's going to be many, many more moments 
in the career of Declan McCarthy. And that's why you need to pay attention very closely to him in 2021, because wherever he wrestles, he is going to go on and do bigger and better things with his tag team partner, Matt Davis, and all the great things that they are going to do. So the Hound of Ulster is coming for you, and he's taking names. And that's why we're honored to have him on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show, to share his story and all the great things that he is doing. So for you, my friend, I want to give you the floor. It's a tremendous honor to speak with you. So I want our worldwide audience to know any closing thoughts, anything you want to share with your fans listening. I also want you to plug your social media so we can keep up to date with all the great things that you're going to do when you get back into the ring next, any other wrestling commentary or any thoughts. So plug your Twitter, Instagram, anything else you have out there so we can keep up to date with you and share your journey and share your progress with our worldwide audience here on Sporting Area. So I want to give you the floor. Any closing thoughts, please plug your social media. I can't thank you enough and the floor is yours, my friend. Cheers, Tom. Thank you very much, man. Close thoughts. No, just look after yourselves out there at the minute. It's we're still in the middle of this pandemic. Just you know, stay safe. Just don't do anything like daft. And uh, hopefully, we all be able to this safe and well or as well as we can be. Um, social media um, on Twitter at Northern Iron PW. That's Northern Iron PW. And I'm on the same thing on Instagram, but I don't really use that because I'm old and don't understand how these things work. <laughs> so uh, you know, find me on Twitter. I generally post fun wrestling stuff or pictures of my cats. So that's pretty much all there is <laughs> happening at the minute. <laughs> Listen, you're not that old, my friend, but you are definitely somebody that everybody <laughs> needs to follow on Twitter and on Instagram. Twitter, that's Northern Iron PW. Instagram, that's Northern Iron PW. And most importantly, everybody needs to keep up to date with the Hound of Ulster, Declan McCarthy, because he is on his way to bigger and better things. And my friend, I can't thank you enough. Congratulations on all the success. I can't wait to have you back on and talk about your next match and all the great things that you are going to do in the future. And I look forward to speaking with you soon and can't thank you enough. Yeah, Tom, thanks so much for having me on. Appreciate that, fella. Thank you. As we're here on the Sports Report, the number one global sports show with one of our number one wrestlers, and that's the Hang of Declan McCarthy, as I am the host of the Sports Report, the Reverend Tom Bryce, and stay tuned for more hard-hitting analysis here on Sportinarium.